Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Re Report. Appreciate you guys for taking this time to hear me out. In today's video, be sure to like the video, hit the subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel, leave a comment on everything that I'm about to drop in this NFL predictions video because the NFL season is here today and of course it's time to give our predictions before we even watch one game. So be sure to hit that like button. <clears throat> You should have subscribed to the video and let's get into it. Kick the intro. the Kansas City Chiefs defending champions defending two-time champions that's something that has never well no that's something that has been done before what has never been done before is a team winning the Super Bowl three times in a row and that's something the Chiefs are hoping to do this year um, and this is also something you know if they 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 are the seventh franchise not counting themselves the Kansas City Chiefs there's been seven franchises that has um, won back-to-back -back Super Bowls and had a chance at a three-peat, and all of those franchises have failed, including one franchise had a chance to do it two times. So let's run through really quickly who those franchises are. You have the Green Bay Packers, Super Bowls, one and two winners. They failed to make it into the playoffs the very next year, trying to three-peat. You had the Miami Dolphins, Super Bowl seven and eight winner. They lost in a divisional round the following year and losing out at a chance to three-peat. You had the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowls nine and ten, winners of those two, two Super Bowls, and they lost to the Raiders in the AFC Championship game the following year, failing at their chance to three-peat. And then you had the Pittsburgh Steelers again, in Super Bowls 13 and 14, losing the fall well the following year, they didn't even make the playoffs. So I, I would say they didn't get a fair shake at things, but they they just didn't make the playoffs. They didn't make the playoffs. You had the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowls 23 and 24. They tried to three peat and lost the following year in the NFC Championship. Game. Then you had the Dallas Cowboys in Super Bowls 27 and 28, lost to the 49ers the following year in the NFC Championship game. Denver Broncos in Super Bowls 32 and 33, winning those. John Elway retired the following year, and the team didn't make the playoffs in 1999. Then you had the New England Patriots <clears throat> in Super Bowls 38 and 39. They lost to the Broncos the following year in the divisional round. And for the ninth time, we have a team with a chance to three-peat as champions. The Kansas City Chiefs won Super Bowls 58, or well, 57 and 58, and now they have, have a chance to win Super Bowl 59, which will be in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. This will be the 11th Super Bowl hosted in that city, and when that Super Bowl kicks off, it will tie them with the Miami Dolphins, the city of New Orleans, that is, with most Super Bowls hosted in a single city. Miami uh, has 11, and as it stands right now, New Orleans has 10. Leave a comment if you believe the Kansas City Chiefs will 3 p as Super Bowl champions. So there's a lot of teams, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a new year, so there's a lot of teams hoping to um, climb over a hump. You know, the 49ers, one of those teams hoping to climb over a hump and uh, taking that next step. You got the AFC, we talked about the Chiefs, but then there's also the Bills. You got the Dolphins, the Ravens, the Browns, the Bengals, Steelers, Texans, Jaguars, maybe, Colts, maybe. I'm not saying they're all Super Bowl contenders, but playoffs, at least they are playoff teams, and that is at least the limit for most of those teams. And in the NFC, you got teams like the Cowboys. I'm not too sure about them. Washington is a team that's looking to rise up. You got the Eagles who got better, the Packers, the Bears, maybe the Lions, the Rams, the Bucks, Falcons revamped big time. And I'm always going to throw my Panthers in there. I'm always going to throw my Panthers up in there. So don't ever expect me to do anything less, especially when they make a move or when they make moves that I, I can be confident in in the offseason and in, in free agency and in the draft. I, I love what the Panthers did, but we still have to see where I, the re-report, have them finishing this season. Are they making the playoffs or are they not? Are they going back to you know the top of the draft? What's going to happen with the Carolina Panthers as well? 
Last year, of course, I believe I had the Eagles beating the Ravens in the Super Bowl. So we're going to see, you know what I'm saying? I told myself that I would never bet against the Chiefs again, but we have, we have to see if I'm going to stick to that. Because the Kansas City Chiefs, like I said, they won two games, three games really count the Super Bowl. But there's Bills and Ravens games, games that they probably, games that I didn't think they would win. I'll put it like that. They, the Ravens kind of beat themselves. Ravens should have won that AFC Championship game. The Bills should have beaten, should have beaten them as well. And the 49ers should have beat them. So they did. They won three games that they probably shouldn't have won in three. And I would say I, I picked them to win the Super Bowl. After they got past Buffalo and Baltimore, I said, I'm not picking against them in the Super Bowl because they're not even supposed to be here. When a team is not supposed to be here, I'm riding with them. Unless they're playing the Panthers. Then I had to go to Carolina. So, without further ado, let's get into our predictions. We're going to predict each team's record each team uh division finish uh division winners i'm gonna give you four teams two teams that will probably surprise some people and we're gonna give you two teams that are probably disappoint some people who are expected to to do good but without further ado let's get into the uh division predictions throwing things off in the afc east of course you got uh Tua tonga valua who just got paid um Talk the big talk about Brian Flores. A lot of people came to his defense and things like that when he was just basically saying Brian Flores was putting him down and that hurt his confidence. And then we got Aaron Rodgers back. We got the Bills who lost some people, but they also signed a couple people, drafted some good rookies from what I heard. And then there's the Patriots. So in this, in this division, I picked the Jets last year to win it. And of course, the Bills won it. Stole it from the Dolphins last game of the season. But this year, I'm taking the Jets to win a division again. That's if Aaron Rodgers can make it out of the tunnel onto the field. I'm taking the Jets to go 11 and 6. I'm taking the Dolphins to go in second place at 9 and 8. I'm taking the Bills to go 9 and 8 as well. Dolphins winning the tiebreaker, so they will finish second. And the New England Patriots will win just two measly games at 2 and 15. In the AFC North, of course, you had Joe Burrow got injured last year. The Ravens. You know, even when you look at the Bengals the last two years before last season, they won a division, and one could argue, is because Lamar Jackson got injured. So last year, Lamar capitalized and ended up winning the division. Like I said, made it to the AFC Championship game, lost the game that they should have won. Uh, this year, this year, I think the Ravens are going to repeat as champions, as division champions at least. I'm taking them to go 12-5. and five. I got the Bengals going 11 and six, finishing second in the division. Browns are still a talented team. Watch out for them. I got them going uh, 10 and seven, and I just don't know about the Pittsburgh Steelers. I got them going just four and 14. Now we go to the AFC South. Last year, the Houston Texans did to the Jacksonville Jaguars what the Jaguars did to the Titans the year prior, and that was when Jacksonville was the team on the come up in Tennessee at the division clinch but couldn't win the game to save their lives at the end. You had Houston basically doing the same thing last year to Jacksonville. Pretty much had looked like they had it locked up but couldn't win a game to save their lives towards the end there. And Houston ended up winning the division with a rookie quarterback and now they are looking like they have the best team in franchise history. The Houston Texans been around of course since 2002 and on paper, you guys let me know in the comments, this is looking like the best Texans team ever. So I got <clears throat> Houston winning this division at 11 and six. I got Jacksonville going seven and 10, the Colts going seven and 10. And I got the Titans going just four and 13. AFC West, this right here is, is of course the Kansas City Chiefs Invitational. There's no doubt about how this division is going to end, especially when you're looking at the Chargers in rebuild mode. You got the Raiders also rebuilding, the Broncos, a middle of the pack type team. And then there's the defending two-time champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Of course, the Chiefs, the Chiefs are going to win their ninth straight AFC West Championship. I got the Broncos going 7-10, Chargers going 7-10, and, and I got the Raiders going 3-14. Who's going to surprise me here? Which one of these AFC teams that we just named is going to be the surprise team? There's always one, right? But we don't know who it's going to be yet. So that's the AFC. Now let's kick things off in the NFC and see what we got going on over there. And after that, we're going to come back and give our a prediction for teams who may disappoint and teams who may surprise you. Then we're going to go into our playoff standings and then we're going to give you all the predictions for the wild card, divisional, conference championships, Super Bowl, and we'll be out of here just like that. 
in the NFC East. Look, I don't know what happened to the Philadelphia Eagles last year. Started 10 and 1, finished 11 and 6. A lot of people, Cowboy fans, did say that they were a fraudulent 10 and 1. And it turns out they were right. You can say they were hating all you want, but they did turn out to be right. They a lot of people didn't really buy the Eagles at 10 and 1. And they proved a lot of people right. Went into the playoffs, lost out on the division when they had it locked up, and immediately lost to Tampa. Dallas didn't fare any better. Won a division, was hot going into the playoffs, like they're always like they always are. Went into the playoffs and got smacked by the Green Bay Packers. Um, Green Bay hung 48 points on them. Dallas scored like 34, but even that 34 points were was it 34? It doesn't matter. Even those 34 points or whatever they scored was not. Uh, an indication of what the uh, true score really was because that was a gar- so a lot of those were garbage points. Green Bay, nobody expected that. Of course, the Giants slid after making the playoffs the year prior. We didn't really expect Washington to do much. But this year, new year, and this season, I'm taking Philly. I really like Philly because I like the addition of Saquon Barkley. I'm taking Philly to win this division at 12-5. and five. I got the Commanders going 10 and 7, shocking some people probably, but they did. They made a lot of moves this offseason, so I got Washington going 10 and 7. I got Dallas sliding at 9 and 8. I don't believe in the Cowboys. I got them going 9 and 8. And I got the Giants, <clears throat> three wins. Nothing much to say about that. They, they, paid, <laughs> they paid Daniel Jones over Saquon Barkley. We'll just leave that there. And then the NFC North. Of course, the Detroit Lions won a division for the first time since like 1993 or something like that. First home playoff game since 1993. It's, it's, it had been a while. And when they showed up at Ford Field, they showed out. Should have beaten the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Had that game won. Faltered in the second half. Can't really explain it, but they stuck to what they had been doing all season. So you can't really say that they tried something new. Dan Quinn loves to gamble and go for it, and this time it just didn't pay, pay off. Uh, you also got the Green Bay Packers who shocked some people. Uh, Jordan Love came into his own, got the big money as well. Uh, you got the Chicago Bears who are now probably <clears throat> best team in a long time. I mean, when's the last time we saw a Bears team on paper as good as what they are? That's the question. DJ Moore got paid, drafted Caleb Williams with the number one pick that the Panthers gave them. Uh, Keenan Allen, uh, DeAndre, DeAndre Swift, I believe, and they out, they've always had a good defense. So let's see how they shape up this year. I got the Lions winning this division at 12 and five. I got Green Bay finishing second at 11 and six. Chicago still think it's going to go eight and nine. I just think it's too much in that division for them. I think they're going to go eight and nine because I think the Vikings can beat them in the game, and that that may be the game that seals their fate right there. So I got the Vikings going four and thirteen, finishing last in that division. <laughs> NFC South, my division, where my team play, where the Black Panthers play. Weakest division in football the last couple of years. Carolina could have won a division two years ago, actually. All because Tampa wasn't as good as what we probably thought they would be. Carolina did lose to Tampa like late in the season. Uh, but last year, last year Tampa pulled out, you know, barely pulled out a winning record at 9-8. and eight. Uh, Falcons were right there in the mix. They got better this offseason. They're probably the, you know, odds on favorite to win the division. I'm not too sure about the Saints. But like I said earlier, I like what the Panthers did. I like what they were able to do in free agency and in the draft. And because of that, I'm confident. <clears throat> I'm confident about the Carolina Panthers. And I got them going 10 and 7, winning the division, winning the tiebreaker over the Atlanta Falcons, who will also go 10 and 7. I got the Bucks and the Saints going 6 and 11. The Bucks finishing third, Saints finishing fourth, whatever that means. But that is my prediction for the NFC South. And let's just go ahead and go straight to the West. Straight to the West. In this division, the 49ers, of course, you know, runner-up in the Super Bowl uh, last season. One of the best teams last season. But for some reason, they just can't <clears throat> win the big one. And I'm not too sure about the 49ers this year. I'm not too sure about the 49ers this year. I just feel like it's Seattle, New England, Super Bowl, post-Super post Bowl 49 all over again. Where the team, the Seattle Seahawks, was just never really the same after that crushing loss to the New England Patriots where they should have won that game. They should have given Marshawn Lynch the ball. 
and I feel like it's gonna be, it's just a feeling. It's, it, it's honestly just a feeling. I feel like it's gonna be the same here with them. But I'm not, I'm, I'm, but again, just like the Seahawks, the 49ers, just like, you know, the, the Seahawks still made it to the playoffs the following year. So I still got San Francisco winning this division at 11 and 6. I got the Rams going 9 and 8. I got Seattle going 5 and 12. And I got the Cardinals. I know Kyler Murray's back. They got a new receiver, Mario Harrison Jr. They could be one of those shocker teams. But I got them going 4 and 13. So those are my division picks. Those are my picks for division winners, uh, every record, placements, and things like that. So before we get into the postseason, let's now go to the um, teams, the four teams, two of them that could shock people and two of them that could disappoint with expectations. I got the Bears. The Bears may be a team that shock a lot of people. Or a lot of people probably expect the Bears to uh, do good, but because I have them going eight and nine, I'm going to say that they could be a team that shocked people. My definition of that is going nine and eight. They can still miss the playoffs. We're going nine and eight or making the playoffs or making it to the Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl. That's my definition of a shocker team right there because I have them going eight and nine. I'm not too confident, <clears throat> confident about that. They could be better than what we expect. Also got the uh, Indianapolis Colts going seven and ten. Same thing. They have a talented roster, good young quarterback, good running back. They could be better than what a lot of people expect as well. I got them going 7-10, and 10, but they could flip that record and go 10-7 and seven maybe. So we'll have to see. Those are my two teams that, you know, could shock you. And the two teams that I think that could disappoint but will probably succeed. But don't be surprised if they disappoint. San Francisco 49ers, again, I just have a gut feeling about that team. They're still talented, still one of the most talented teams. The Super Bowl hangovers are real, especially when you are in a position to where you could have and should have won the Super Bowl. They should have won that Super Bowl. Don't be surprised if the San Francisco 49ers fail to live up to expectations. And the other team, I have a little doubt about them, but I'm still going to name them as well, and that's the Baltimore Ravens. Just because of how last year ended was just bitter. It was so bitter how it ended. So don't be surprised at the Baltimore. Well, I would still be surprised, but I just have a small feeling about them. Baltimore could be a thing that we expect to do good. And now that we have the divisions predicted, the records predicted, it's now time to move on to the playoffs. And without further ado, Let's get to the playoff standings. We got the Chiefs as the one seed entering these playoffs, according to the Reed Report, going 13 and 4 as the one seed. Ravens as the 12 seed, going 12 and 5. We got the Texans as the three seed, going 11 and 6. And we have the Jets as the four seed, going 11 and 6 as well. And then we go down to the wild card teams. We got the Bengals as the five seed going 11 and six. We got the Dolphins going nine and eight, beating the Bills for the tiebreaker at nine and eight. The Bills will also be nine and eight with the seven seed. So those are the Reed Report's AFC playoff standings. And now let's get to the wild card round. I got the Baltimore Ravens playing the Buffalo Bills two versus seven. I got Baltimore beating the Bills in the playoffs be a bit of a rematch from what the 20, 2020 NFL playoffs I believe where Buffalo beat the Ravens when Lamar got injured and then we got the Texans versus the Dolphins I got CJ Stroud and company beating the Miami Dolphins in a game that on paper <clears throat> will probably be a shootout if this matchup happens you know it'll be in Texas it'll be inside so we, we don't have to expect any weather and even if it was in Miami it'll still be a game where you don't have to worry about any uh, bad weather inclement weather and I got the Bengals beating the Jets. Not much of an upset because the Bengals, like I said, they're just in a division, a tough division where there's a team that, that that are just a little bit better than them, and that's the Baltimore Ravens. So I don't I wouldn't really consider this an upset if it were to happen. But I got the Bengals over the Jets. And then in the divisional round, I got the Kansas City Chiefs beating the Cincinnati Bengals in the postseason they didn't play last year the Bengals didn't make it but I think the last time they played was the AFC championship game where the Chiefs where the Bengals beat the Chiefs was it 22 was it 21 
and to, no, no, no. The Chiefs beat them in the very next year in the AFC Championship game. So I was wrong about that. So this is a postseason rubber match, I guess. And whoever wins this one could very well end up in the Super Bowl. But also we got the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens squad versus the Texans in a rematch of last year's divisional championship matchup. And I got the Baltimore Ravens beating the Houston Texans. So that leaves us with a rematch of the AFC Championship game. But this time it will be in Kansas City. Now, I know I said it's hard for me to bet against the Chiefs. But Baltimore, the way they went out last year, you cannot go out like that without having that unanswered. So I'm going to take the Baltimore Ravens to upset, beat the Kansas City Chiefs this time around in the rematch. And the Kansas City Chiefs will fail on their quest at a 3 P. So people will have to hold off on the Brady as the GOAT, on, on the uh, Patrick Mahomes as the GOAT over Brady conversation. Now I'm going to the NFC. We got the Philadelphia Eagles as the one seed in the playoff standings. We got the 12 and 5. We got the Detroit Lions as the two seed at 12 and 5. San Francisco will be the three seed at 12 and 5. The Carolina Panthers, I know my credibility is shot with a lot of you, but like I said, <clears throat> feel good about what they did. And if they were a bad team, I would tell you that they're a bad team. I told you last year they wouldn't be a very good team. But I feel like this year they're going to be a team that will surprise you. Not the way I have the Bears and Colts, but they're a team that will surprise you. I got the Green Bay Packers going 11-6 and six with the 5 seed. I got the Falcons going 10-7. and seven. They'll get the 6 seed. Cow uh, Commanders, I was about to say Cowboys, going 10-7 and seven with the 7 seed. So that means the Cowboys won't even be in the playoffs according to the read report. So that means in the playoffs, in the wild card round, we got the two-seeded Lions. I got them beating the Washington Commanders in the playoffs. I got the three-seeded 49ers beating the Atlanta Falcons in the playoffs. And it was weird for me to pick the Packers <clears throat> to beat the Panthers because I have the Panthers in the playoffs, so why not just take them all the way? I'm not going to do that. But this very well could change if this actually happens. Playoff happens, there's a whole different ball game. There's not even a chance that they'll be playing the Packers. And we'll just have to see what the matchups are. But according to what we have matched up right here, I'll take Green Bay over Carolina. So that means next week in the divisional round, I got the one-seeded Eagles beating the Green Bay Packers to advance to the NFC Championship game. And I have the two-seeded Lions this time hosting the 49ers. And they will get their get back on the San Francisco 49ers. Not in the same atmosphere, the same championship game, but in the postseason. So that means in the NFC championship game, we got the one-seeded Eagles against at home against the two-seeded Lions. And again, <clears throat> I had the same Super Bowl as I had last year prediction. Philadelphia Eagles will beat the Detroit Lions, and they will go on to play the Baltimore Ravens in Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans. Those are my predictions in that Super Bowl. I'm taking the Philadelphia Eagles. This will be such an even matchup and a fun matchup if it happens. I got it two years in a row. I know I'm crazy. I should have my homes in here, but this is how I'm feeling. I'm taking the Eagles to beat the Ravens 27-21 in this year's Super Bowl. Those are my predictions. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you are predicting. Hear me out on this one. Put in the comments how crazy I am. Put what teams, records that you, you know, that you may believe. Um, who will win what division or whatever. But thank you guys for hearing me out. This has been the Read Report. And, you know, we got 22, 24 weeks of football. We got some time to figure this out. Things could change depending on injury. So we could be, very well be sitting here giving an update depending on an injury or something or in the significance of that injury and how much it will impact things. But until then, these are our predictions and we'll talk soon. Peace.